potatoes. I can guarantee you I'm going to give you the tips and tricks to grow the most ginormous potatoes on planet Earth because you guys have seen me do it before and you've asked for this video several years in a row. So here we are. Now if you don't know who I am, my name's Ashley. I have a Bachelor of Science in Soil Science and I've been gardening since I was about five years old. And let me tell you, I've killed and screwed up enough potatoes so that you don't have to. I think the number one thing we want to look at is exactly why you would want to grow a potato or why you would even want these in your garden. Number one is they store great, they store long term, and they actually also contain a lot of essential minerals and nutrients. They're probably one of the most jam-packed vegetables you can grow inside of your garden. And another jam-packed nutrient that you can not put in your garden, but you could use as a gardener, because I've been using for months now, is Ritual Vitamins. So Ritual's been a sponsor of this channel for a while now. I've used their multivitamin, their prenatal multivitamin, and then I've used their stress relief formula. Now they have a smoothie version, and you guys know I've been on a health journey for a while. I've been doing a kind of a little glow up thing, and one of those things is actually protein. Ritual Vitamins is the answer. They are backed by science, and they've put a lot of effort into their product and I personally find it does not disrupt my tummy and the flavor of the smoothie is absolutely delicious. Essential Protein 18 Plus is a clean traceable plant-based protein that helps form lean muscle and support muscle recovery after exercise. It has a plant-based formula that delivers a complete amino acid profile and 20 grams of protein. For me personally, I like to mix this into a protein coffee. So if you don't know what that is, it is literally when you take protein powder in milk or water and then you can use espresso, powdered espresso in my case, with caramel because this is a caramel flavored one it is the most refreshing summer drink for you to enjoy now if you want to grab this essential protein 18 plus it is now 26 dollars 40 instead of 44 dollars. this is during the rituals mother's day sale and you can use my link www.ritual.com gardening 40 to get 40% off your entire order. So that means you can use the multivitamins that I've been using, which is the prenatals in my case. You can also get that stress relief formula that I was talking about. Like I mentioned, I've been using Ritual Vitamins for months now, and I've been using a number of their different product lines. Every single one I love the same. And if you want to, again, check that out, you can use that QR code or the www.ritual.com slash gardening40 if you want 40% off their site Why Ritual, thank you so much for sponsoring the video again. Now let's talk about well, potatoes the other multivitamin of the world okay step one when it comes to potatoes is actually picking the correct variety i always go with the yukon gold and then i do the norland reds now these i just grabbed from walmart but you could literally grab any brand my only recommendation is when you're choosing the brand is to go for something that is as local as possible ideal world i would have gotten these from early Farm gardening here in saskatchewan because they have a saskatchewan version of the potatoes they're grown in saskatchewan and the reason I say that is because any plant, whether it's a tuber or a seed that was grown and matured inside of your environment is going to perform better in your environment. Now, in the event that you can't make that happen, you can't get a Saskatchewan version or an Alberta or an Ohio, whatever it is, you can just go for your country. This is 100% Canadian, grown in Canada. That is probably a pretty good sign that it's gonna do okay in Canada. So that's kind of the step down we're going with the step down this year. The reason why you choose seed potatoes over regular potatoes solely comes down to blight. Some people say they store better, they're better engineered towards growing. I don't, none of that's really true. What is true is that blight in potatoes is dangerous and it's killed off entire populations. My ancestors to name a few. And because of that, you don't want that blight infested potato to be put into the soil because it will overwinter in your soil. No problem, even here in Canada. And once you have it in there, it just amplifies over and over and over again. But if you have any suspicions of blight on your crop last year and you still have crop left over, do not, I repeat, do not put it in your garden. That needs to go, not even the compost, it just needs to go away, far, far away. And you need to grab a bag of seed potato. Speaking of diseases and disease resistance, step two Two, after you've chosen the potato you're going with is actually to chip listed this out on my 25 seed starting tips rapid fire tips i didn't go into too much detail but essentially when you chit a potato it takes around two to three weeks you just want to put them in a cool sunny area typically like in an egg carton or something of that sort and you will eventually get these 
kind of nodules and you want them to be short and stout. You don't actually want those big long ones. Now the reason for that is multifaceted. Number one, it actually makes them more disease resistant. It makes for earlier emergence of the tubers and it just overall in a cold climate essentially guarantees a better harvest. That's why you wanna go with chitting and this is just a known fact. So take the time to do it. It doesn't have to be extreme. You can get like a lot of going on or you can just have a little bit for the sake of time I'm going to this route. That is it. That is all. Number three, kind of controversial, but I don't actually cut or divide these by eyes. Now you can, and if you do, you need to then allow it to scarf. You want to chit the potato, cut the potato, and then allow it to scar. You could chit and cut at the same time, two birds with one stone, but essentially that scar absolutely must be scabbed over because it will introduce disease and rot and we do not want that. That's the way to prevent it. I personally do not cut at all. And since I stopped cutting my potatoes and then allowing them to scar, I've gotten even larger yields. Now the reason for that is because each one of these little eyes is what we call them, will produce a a, a plant and just because they're separated doesn't mean that much when you have soil in the correct condition and we'll talk about that here in a little bit and it's at the right texture you don't need to split it and splitting it just redistributes the storage so to get the most storage you just have it all in one place and that is what i do it's what i've been doing for years and it works wonderfully i don't have to worry about other factors like scarring and disease and not having enough starch or storage material for the potato, you get the idea. Let's talk about my obvious favorite part and that is the soil. Now the soil needs to be around the five to 10 degrees Celsius mark and that part is important. You need to get a soil temp thermometer to make sure you're hitting that. And we're not talking the surface of the soil, we're actually talking the depth in which you're going to place the potato. Once you know that the temperature is there, you then wanna make sure your texture is there. We are talking light, fluff. You are going to till the baby bejeebus out of this. I know I'm a horrible person. You're going to till it and then you're going to plant the potato at the deepest part you can get it to where it begins to get hard. Your tillage machine can't get any deeper. That's where you want to place the potato. The direction of the eyes actually doesn't really matter that much that you can kind of do any which way. And then you want to make sure that you try to walk on this soil the least amount possible. The only other time you're gonna walk on it is actually when you're gonna do the next step, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. You're going to make sure there's adequate spacing. You do not want to jam potatoes together. You want to make sure the spacing is there. I did a video on spacing and the importance of it and potatoes fall into the realm of plants that need to, to have it. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure there's the proper spacing between plants. You're just going to simply pop your potato in and then you're going to cover it. When you go to cover it, you wanna cover it enough, but not too, too much. And I leave a little divot in the soil. And what you're gonna do is you're going to wait for it to come up. Once you see some plants come up, you're gonna pile more dirt on top, more, more. You're going to have something that is convex above the soil rather than concave, which is what we currently have. Now the reason for the fluff and the reason for the concave that's going to turn into the convex is because our sole purpose is to keep the potato moist, but not compacted in any way, shape or form. So as you can imagine, I'm walking on what feels like the moon right now. It's very fluffy, very light soil because it's all been tilled up. I'm going to put the potato in at the point in which it feels like there's a little bit of a resistance and barrier. I'm gonna put my potato in and then I- That was a gun. Anyways, target practice, I guess. If there's resistance on the potato, whether it's from friends next door or your soil not being light and fluffy, you will have small potatoes. That is just a fact. They are heavily, they're, they are one of the roots of plant world that do not push or dig or destroy, whereas a tree root, for example, it's gonna go through a cement. Potatoes don't do that, so you can't expect them to. They need the light fluff, which is actually why you see people oftentimes growing them in bags or you see them growing them in straw and these tend to be, okay, I really, I don't need it. YouTube does not wanna see it. His pretty was pretty nuisance. 
Hey, shout out nuisance. Anyways, that's the reason why you see them in grow bags or sometimes you see the bale method, for example. The idea there is to place the potatoes in a space where they are not getting any resistance. And you don't have to put them in a bag and you don't have to put them in a bale. All you need to do is till your soil and that will give you very similar experience to those other methods. With those methods, the key is to keep them moist. And I personally find it very difficult in my climate. I don't know if it's just way too dry and hot by the time summer rolls around. But for example, that straw bale method, it's very difficult for me to keep that moist, I personally find. Same with like the grow bags. That is why I put them in the ground. After that, the next stage is actually probably one of the more important ones as well. And that is watering. When it comes to the early stages of potato potato growth, you don't want a ton of water and the soil is relatively moist where I am right now. And that is because we're coming out of the ground literally just thawing out here very recently. And so because of that, I'm not going to water these potatoes. I'm simply going to put them in the ground and then I'm going to put some soil on top, give them a light little pat, and that's gonna be enough to get these guys to sprout and grow and to begin the process of making supper. Okay, Bob, get out of here. That's so sad. What? The only time you ever come on YouTube to look at anyone on the Geek Crew is when you want to show them Death. your harvest in the form of meat. Of my harvest. It's been a while since I've got two in a row. Picture ah. of your harvest. Do people actually eat pigeons? It's like a, those dating profile pics that everyone makes fun of. Smile. They're still warm. I gotta give them to the cats quickly. Not really. No, I don't want to shoot a shot. I'm Cheers. good. I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I like planting vegetables more so than birds. Big no! No holes with a shotgun. I'm okay. What was I going to say? Once I begin to see growth and I go in for my first set of additional soil, that is when I will begin to introduce some water. And the reason why I'm restricting water in the beginning is because potatoes will rot if they're too moist. And the soil, if we're going in at like the seven degrees Celsius, the absolute bare minimum soil temp, it's very cold. Plants, while they can do well and sprout and whatever in those degrees, it's still cold enough that it could cause rot and really slow growth. And that really slow growth in turn causes rot. That's why I want to limit that. Then as the season goes on, I'm going to water them. Once I notice the growth is beginning to stop and things are beginning to die back, that's when I'm gonna pull back on watering. If you've ever had that kind of scaly looking potato, that is a sign of a potato that was watered long after it had grown and sprouted and done its thing. After that, the only other thing that I actually do do is as the season goes on, compaction will happen. Water, rain, compact soil. Sounds crazy, but it's true. I'm going to compact it when I go to weed it. So I will take a pitchfork and I will actually go into the mound and I will lift and fluff it very gently. I'm not going in there crazy, but I am going to lightly fluff and lift it. And to put it into perspective, when I go to harvest my potatoes, I can very easily push my hand into that mound and feel the size of the potato and take my hand back out and the plant can continue to grow just fine. That's how light and fluffy I want it for the entire season. And I get, I do that by whatever means necessary. If it means a pitchfork and doing some gentle kind of like broad fork lifting, that is what I do. You can of course use fertilizers that are more engineered towards a potatoes, like for example, something that's higher like in a potassium or a phosphorus. I am in an environment where there's a lot of manure because there is a big manure pile that then gets moved into here. So as you can imagine, it's very rich in nutrients and it's very, it's, it's a loam soil. It's, I would say it's like a clay loam in and around. It's not ideal soil by any means. It's very similar to what you guys deal with and, and the compaction that you deal with. It's almost identical to that, but it's just rototilled. It's very, very fluffy. I hope this helps you guys out. Like I said, I've grown some monster potatoes. If you follow what I'm telling you, I can promise you, guarantee you, you will have ginormous potatoes. I am going to plant these and then I'm also going to do some grocery store ones that got a little bit crazy. And like I said, it doesn't have to be a seed potato. I'm just going to use the grocery store ones. They're completely fine. Fine. They don't have any blight or anything crazy. They're not edible anymore at this point. So they're going in the garden and they're going to make potatoes. Now, are they going to be as successful? Maybe not because they're probably from somewhere not it, anywhere close to a Saskatchewan zone three. Thanks Geek Crew for watching. What are your potato tips and tricks? Pop them down below and I will talk to you guys next time.